Good, well welcome here this morning, welcome to everyone here at Breakthrough City Church and those online, welcome to Will and Joanne uh, and uh, Tolo, welcome and to Sean and Janine, welcome and to see us and you guys, welcome, Courtney, welcome down there at the coast and uh, welcome to those guys there in Lesotho and overseas in Switzerland, um, this message is for you as well, Amen. So um, this morning I want to just continue sharing something with you. Um, I've been sharing to you about uh, what we've actually been called and why we're living. And that is to worship the one and only um, Jesus Christ. And to know the Holy Spirit and His presence in our lives. And um, I just believe we're at a very key junction on planet Earth. Because... Um, John 4 speaks about that God is not looking for worship. He doesn't need worship. Um, but what the Bible does say is looking for worshipers. And I shared with you a couple of weeks ago um, regarding just about some of the worship and what it means where the Lord spoke to me and he said, I'm more than enough. And, um, and that was the message what I started to share about that he's more than enough. And what does it mean actually this this place and this posture of worship, what does it mean? And we spoke about worship, that it is not about singing songs, songs are facilitate, but worship is more than singing songs. Because anyone can sing songs, the world has amazing bands and musicians, but it, it's not worship. So um, just one or two things I want to just touch on what I did share, just to slightly recap, and I'm going to just go further. Um, I started to share with you about Remember I said that the Israelites, um, when God said, I want them to come out uh, out of Egypt, he spoke to Moses and he said, Moses, you go speak to Pharaoh. And said, and he said, um, he spoke to Pharaoh and he said that, I want my people to come and to worship me. Um, and then Pharaoh later said, he said, listen, let Israel go and let them go worship your God. So um, the reason why we come out of slavery is to actually worship God and as a believer those that serve and are born again as believers we your ability and way of worship reflects to what extent you actually are free I'll say again I said this a few weeks ago your ability and way of worship will reflect to the extent that you are free. Because Egypt came out of, uh, is, sorry, Israel came out of Egypt and they were in slavery. Isn't that so? This is an Old Testament shadow of what was to come. And they were to go and worship God. That's why God called them to himself. And what I said that they then crossed the Red Sea. And we know that after they crossed the Red Sea, it was a big celebration because of the breakthrough. What I also shared that as, as Christians and believers, um, a lot of our worship should be prophetic worship, meaning that we start to worship God before we have the breakthrough. If they started before they crossed the Red Sea, it would have been a lifestyle. But because the breakthrough came after crossing the Red Sea, it became uh, a specific time. It became, uh, it wasn't a lifestyle, it was an event. So a lot of believers, what happens, it's like when we watch a sports match and it's in football or rugby or whatever it might be, and our team wins, woo, we celebrate and we celebrate because they actually won. But what happens when, it, it, it might seem crazy to a lot of people that you celebrate before even the match starts. But in the kingdom, when we actually start to prophetically start to worship God, what actually comes behind and backs us is actually heaven itself. Because God steps into the circumstances. So this is what I shared a few weeks ago about. And, um, and I spoke about that... Um, there's this verse I'm going to just read to you again, and uh, um, it's two translations. I'll read it to you. Yeah, it's in the Song of so uh, Song of Songs, and it's in verse nine, verse chapter four, verse nine, and it says, "God says of Himself, 
in Song of Solomon, he says, I am undone with one gaze of your devotion. Remember what I said, why is it that actually God wants our worship? And I said this thing to you, I said, because he actually likes you and me. That's why he likes us. He doesn't need our worship, but he wants it because he actually likes us. And then I spoke about King David. He's, God says he's a man after my own heart. He's a man after my own heart. Because God saw the response of David. And because he loved David. And remember I said that David danced before the ark of the covenant, before the presence of God. He actually, as he led, he led the presence of God. God was responding to his response. And I said that God actually makes himself vulnerable to us. And I refer to in the book of Revelations where I shared with you about how in the book of Revelations, we see the worship around the throne. And we see the 24 elders We see the saints that have gone to be with the Lord. We see the living creatures and worshiping. And then there was lightning and thunder. Why? Because there was a response. God was responding because of the worship. So God actually made himself vulnerable. That you actually see his response. So when this scripture says here in the Song of Songs, this is what I'm trying to say is that you and I need to realize how we actually impact God. We actually can influence God. That's why I said, David, you have a heart after me. Because David responded and was influenced because of a right heart of worship. And he says here, I am undone with one gaze of your devotion. That is what God was saying. This is the song of songs. It goes about the bride and bridegroom, about us. That is... Song of Songs, chapter 4, verse 9. The Passion Translation says this. This is quite cool. For you reach into my heart. With one flash of your eyes, I am undone. This is what God is saying about our worship. Eh? This sounds crazy. I say, <laughs> this sounds crazy. This is what God is saying. Because the Song of Songs, uh, Song of Solomon's uh, Song of Songs, goes about... Uh, the bride and the bridegroom goes about Christ, the groom, and the bride, us, the church. And he says here, in, in the Passion Translation, uh, it says, For you reach into my heart with one flash of your eyes, I am undone by your love. My beloved, my equal, my bride, you leave me breathless, I am overcome. It sounds crazy that God is actually saying, that's why it's called the Passion Translation, because it's passionful. (laughs) Go read it in Amplified, go read it in the uh, New American Standard, or whatever standards you want to read, go read it. But this, it just amplifies everything here. And it shows you the passion that, that God has for you and me. And you know that there's a lot of Christians, we don't understand this because we don't think our lives affect him. Because a lot of uh, believers, we have an orphan mentality. It's, it's about what we, we have to beg for things. That's the orphan spirit, even in the church. Where we don't realize that our, our, our response affects and influences God. That he's so affected and impacted. I mean, you know, it's, it's, I shared with you about how the woman with the issue of blood. In the crowd, there was a crying out. They were looking for him in that, whatever. And just this woman, one woman, because of her response in heart, affects Jesus and says, who touches me? Who touched me? It's the same as the woman caught in, 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 in adultery. And how uh, uh, she is... Um, uh, um, her life is impacted. So I want to encourage you and, and, and say, you know what? Um, 
if, if we learn, this is why Jesus, you know, in the word of God, it says about he's looking for worshipers. Because he likes us. He actually loves us. That's why he came for us. There's this divine uh, uh, love that God has from the start. Before the earth was formed, he even knew you and me. And that's why creation is longing for the sons of God to rise. Because not the orphans. The orphans don't know how to respond to his love. Because an orphan always cannot believe what the father has for them. Orphans don't know how to receive love. They only know how to receive handouts. The word of God says that God loved us yet while we were sinners. That's the father's love. And our response is that we can respond to him. So now when we respond to him, something even influences him. He, he's, he's, the scripture I read to you that he's, he's undone. He's so affected by our worship. That's how we actually influence God. Because of his passionate love for us. It's amazing. It's, it's, that, 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 is why, that is why we need to understand this. That to worship God in our daily lives wherever we are, you, we are supposed to experience him. It is not an, something that is numb. We actually can experience God. We, he's in, in worship, um, I mean, even yesterday, I, I had a bit of a time, I said to my daughter that she was busy making some lovely food, and uh, I, I said, okay, I'm going to give some volume. I got this boom box thing there, and I just put it on. I said, I'm giving some volume just excuse me, and it's, it's in the room next door. And I just played it because I like loud sound. But one day I said, I'll have my own man cave and I'll have sound systems in there that blow and bring heaven like you can't believe. Anyway, so, but, so I just used music to help facilitate the worship, okay? So we're, it's, songs and that is wonderful, but we don't have to have it. It's, it's, it's the heart posture. And so we started to, and I just put on one or two in that, um, just songs, you know, just a worship and that. And, and I turned my affection of my heart towards the Father. And I could just enjoy, enjoy his presence because this is the key to, 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 to as, as believers, we've got to actually experience his presence. And, and that you overcome because you experience what he feels about you. Do you experience that? Do you experience his love for you? That's how I got saved. I didn't get saved because I was fearing to go to hell. The Bible says that it is, it is his kindness, it is his goodness that leads me to repentance. Not the fear of going to hell. Is there a reality of going to hell? For sure. But it wasn't the fear of going to hell. It was his absolute love. The reason that melted the hardness of the hardness and the pain in my heart. That's why I turned to him. And if you don't pick that up, even uh, for those you know, that are born again, that, and I believe everyone here is born again, those are listening, maybe you're not born again yet, is that that is the start to this love, this divine romance, is this, is this pursuit of him. God is pursuing you he's, and we pursuing him. And if you can build your life in that of pursuing him, there's such a passion that starts to build up. I mean, that, um, and, and I said this before in some part of my testimonies, even I remember just when I got saved, this was the, the, because I got saved because of his love, not because of the fear of going to hell, but because of his love that I remember going to uh, work when I was uh, uh, working at this company and I would go in my lunchtime type of thing and I'd go into one of the big buildings, there was massive buildings and they were, it was actually closed off, they were busy and I would go in there and I would just start to just experience and encounter God. And I would be crying before the Lord because of his goodness, not because of sadness. And often 
I, I start to weep. Not out of sadness. I start to weep because of, how, because of He's so good. That is why I weep. Most times, just when I encounter God, I start to weep because He's overwhelming love for me. So when, when, my, when my heart responds to the Father, when our hearts respond to the Father like that, He's undone. And He reciprocates because that's what Revelations 4 says. That's what I said. Is that as they worshipped Him, as they worship Him presently now in heaven, around the throne, remember, holy, 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 holy. And remember I said, it's 24-7. It's just continual holy, holy. Why? Because even the created beings, the creatures, the saints that have gone before us, those who are born again that are there already, there's something new about him that is revealed. That's why they're so holy. Something new about him is revealed. That, that transcendent beauty, there's something new revealed about him. So that is why God is new every morning. He's fresh every morning. There's something new about him that we can experience. And God is not boring because he's life. He's love. There's something new about him every morning. Um, so, you know, I, I, so I want to just jump into even just part of what I want to share today. And I'm going to actually give you uh, shortly, I'm going to give you pretty much um, the actual, uh, some of you might know this already, but it will help you practically. Um, how do you sometimes respond? I will actually give you some of the Hebrew words what worship and praise is that you actually see the meaning why do you lift your hands well you know it's not like um you know holding the tray carrying the tray <laughs> why do you lift your hands that's a good question why do you shout out why do you kneel down why do you so i'll give you some references to this okay so let me first just jump in just a bit further than that so um what I want to say is that who believes, who knows for every revolution there's a new song? Did any of you do history? <laughs> for every revolution there's a song. For every new thing God does, there's also a new song. So that's why you see continually there's new songs in the body of Christ because there's different seasons that open up and there's new songs. So when something new happens, there's a new song, all right? So, now, so a new level also means what? There's a new level of faith that must match that, what God's doing. And God is busy doing something very uh, amazing. I really feel in the season that we're going into, there's been, there's been major spiritual warfare. There's a lot of things happening in natural. There's a lot of shaking happening on planet Earth at the moment, all over. Who's seen that? It's happening, but there's a new level. So... Um, you know, uh, at a new level of worship, we need to respond in a new way. Um, it's like part of worship, I mean, you know, if you want to call even the thing about worship evangelism, well, how, well, how would that look, you know, if reaching people? What is worship? Because worship, you remember, is not singing songs. So at worship evangelism is that I have a new level of faith, and I actually, out of worship, I would be, as we hear testimonies, where I will share with someone about, you know, I've just prayed and I shared for uh, someone to be healed and, and they get healed. They encounter God. That is part of my level of faith for a new season has risen as, as a worshiper. So if you want to know when you're in a new season, your faith level has risen, but you also start to do things in a different way. You start, to, you start, even as believers, you do new things in a new way. That's why there's continual upgrading in the body of Christ that must take place. Continual training and equipping. Right, so your new season is tied to a new revelation of God and your response to that new revelation. That's what happened on the throne. There's a new revelation who God is. There's worship. When you see God's provision in a new way, what happens to you? You respond, well, God, you're amazing. You provided this miracle in provision for me. Do, do you understand? So for every new season of breakthrough, there's, there's your, your faith and your worship starts to change. That's why I say, how does it look 
prophetic worship because you start to worship in a way, not to get something, but because of who he is. And you start to see your breakthroughs come quicker. Because you're not worshiping, you know, after your breakthrough. You're actually starting to, to, to by faith, starting to access things of God. You start to bring the future into the present. That's what the prophetic is. Guess what? Your and my worship will shake nations. You must understand when you and I are worshiping God, whether it's at home, whether it's at work, whether it's gathered together, something happens in the environment. And they were gathered in one accord, with one heart, with one mind, in the book of Acts. And what happened? Holy Spirit was poured out, the city was affected, and it said a sound went into the city. There wasn't speakers. Something shifted in the spiritual atmosphere. So when we come together, that's why it is so important to be even in our corporate meetings as well. It's so important to be uh, coming together as the body. It is so important because together, that, that is a corporate anointing in a place. Yes, one or two gather, God is there. But in a corporate gathering, like in the upper room, something shifts in the atmosphere. But something also shifts, yeah, yeah, together. Right? So that's important. So when I, lift up my, uh, when I lift up Jesus, the Bible says, when you lift me up, I will draw men unto me. Isn't that so? When we lift Jesus, make Jesus' name big, what happens? He draws people to him. So that's what happens when we start to worship. Something happens in the spirit. I want us just to have a look in the book of Luke. Luke chapter 2. I'm going to, read, we're going to just read some scriptures in Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. So, just remember, yeah, we're going to read about the, 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 the whole announcing that about Jesus is coming uh, as a babe. And uh, um, the thing is, do you know that, that God, basically they were saying, yeah, that God is coming through man as a baby in a manger. But... God um, in man is also like a baby. Christ in you, the hope of glory. There's, there's, there's Christ. The fullness of Christ is there's a fullness that is growing inside you and me. So Jesus came as a baby through man, but he's also now in you and me. And we are becoming more like him. All right. So yeah, this verse speaks here. So there's many prophecies that were fulfilled and um, that actually will happen in this way about God wants to birth something new. Yeah, in, in Luke chapter 2, it says the following from verse 8 to 14. It says here, Now they were in the same country, shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill, uh, um, goodwill uh, toward men. Uh, okay, so just I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just give you also one of the translations here. Um, goodwill is actually the word there translated as favor. Um, just remember that. Okay, so I'm going to get back to you. So what's happening here is that, yeah, you have these shepherds. They're busy watching the flocks. And they're busy overseeing what's, what's happening there. It's like, remember, there's a lot of shepherds here on planet Earth as well, presently, who are busy looking after sheep. Okay? And um, you know what? I believe there's many shepherds that have been watching faithfully after the sheep. 
on planet Earth. There's, there's, it's almost like there's been such dark times and things on planet Earth. But you know what? When, when God is about to do something new, what happens? God starts to break in on those who have been faithful in the night season. If you've been faithful in the night seasons of your life now, God wants to break in. If you've been faithful in your night seasons, the dark times that you've been going through, God wants to break through and break in. And that's what's busy happening now because there's such shaking that's been taking place. All right? So he breaks in on those who have been faithful to watch over what they have been given to watch. Whether it's your children, whether it's your business. That you've been faithful with your business, you've been faithful in your marriage, you've been faithful at school, you've been faithful at... God is about to break in and to break forth for those who've been faithful. So whatever that group of people or that metron is, metron is the people that you influence, um, he's, he's given you to, to steward, God is about to break in. So your faithfulness, guess what? Your faithfulness turns the head, of, the head of God and actually makes an angel show up. Because it says here, it says they were just watching, looking after sheep. They were faithfully looking after sheep. If you've been faithful for what you've been doing as a believer, suddenly God sends an angel to break forth in the situation there that you're in. And you start to see divine intervention in your life in your school, in your relationships, in your business. All right? So this faithfulness turns the head of God to look in the, into your situation. So I want to do something, but before God wants to do something, he says, listen, that's what happened here. He says, shepherds, I actually want to tell you something before I do it. That's what he's doing planet earth at the moment that God is starting to bring about new seasons for many people and for many situations because people have been faithful he says guys I want to do something I want to get your attention because there's favor in your life all right so God chose faithful shepherds to tell what he's about to do next that's what heaven does because heaven responds to faithful people. There's many people, like I said, it's, it's easy to go to church on a Sunday, fall asleep there, go home, do the normal thing. But have you been faithful with what God has called you to do and be? So, yeah, this day, what happens is that the angelic are bringing... Um, is bringing them into what God was doing presently. So the, the, remember the angelic hosts are involved with what, is, what things are happening on planet earth now. And when we've been involved with what God is doing, the angels are sent to assist us. Because we've been faithful. So Jesus came. He came in the perfect time. He came in the perfect time. The most needed time Jesus comes on the scene. This is what they were announcing now. So the angels came to announce it. And immediately what happens? The heavenly host were there. Verse 13 and 14. It says here. It says, And suddenly there was, uh, was with the angels a multitude of the heavenly host, and praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Okay? So there is this intervention suddenly uh, what happens all the heavenly hosts are with them Whew, suddenly who would like that at your school who would like it at your workplace remember angels are ministering spirits to the heirs of salvation hebrews chapter one they're there to assist us when we're walking with him but when we're not walking with god then we don't necessarily always see what's happening because we're more aware of the circumstance. Um, so yeah, we have it in verse 14. It speaks about glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace 
And then it says this. It says this there in, in, uh, in, in that verse. It says, And on whom his favor rests, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, and this is the translation, it says, and on whom his favor rests. Guess what? God's favor rests on you. So, why would the angels show up and say this if the favor was not resting on them? There was favor on those people, on the shepherds. That's why the angels pitched up. So when we understand what it is um, that, when, that favor rests on us, listen to me carefully, when you understand favor rests on you, worship breaks out. Did you hear what I said? When you understand favor rests on your life, worship will break out. Who believes you've got favor in your life? If you believe you have favor in your life, you will start to worship. I want to say the following that um, just be careful with this. We don't worship God to get God here. You, you need to just grasp something here because this will help you in your walk. This will help you in your walk with God. We don't worship to get God here because Holy Spirit is already in you and me. Okay? We worship God. Because he is here. We worship God because he is here. If you make the slight shift in your life, your reality of worship will change. Because a lot of us, we, we only suddenly, you know, we feel the presence of God and suddenly, ah, I worship him. But what if you realize that we don't have to get his presence here, his presence is already here. And we can start to worship him. So because you're walking under favor, you're not living for favor. You are walking under favor. You're not living to get favor. You're living from favor. That's what these, these, these shepherds were there. They, they, God pitches up and he tells them. Why does he tell them? You could have pitched up and told the other people because there was favor on them. Because they were faithful with what they were doing. Are you guys with me? Everyone awake there? Good. Just checking. Was it a long weekend? All right, verse 14 and 15. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them in heaven into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord had made known to us. All right? So I want to say that all encounters, so some of us have had encounters with angels. We've seen Feathers coming down, things that have happened, encounters, we've seen angels, we've experienced their presence with us. But all encounters, I want to emphasize this, that you have with angelic host, all encounters are meant to lead you to find Jesus. You're not there to worship angels. So all encounters that you have with angelic host always lead you to Jesus. Just remember that. So they could have been overwhelmed by the angels like we see in the Bible. Some of the guys, you know, were overwhelmed with the angels and that. But you could have been overwhelmed by, or they could have been overwhelmed by the angels' encounters. But the angelic encounter leads you always to Jesus. Okay, that's important. That's important about encounters. All right, what I want to just to do, um, I'm going to just, I'm going to get to some of these, um, um, some of these uh, uh, Hebrew 
words for praise and worship. So some of, you, some of these things you've heard before, but this will give you just some understanding why we do certain things. So when you take time to worship and, you know, you're at home or you're at work or whatever, and, you know, you're lifting your hands up. I don't know if you realize, I'm going to show you now, something happens when you do this. So in um, the first, there's basically seven Hebrew words, seven Hebrew words I'm going to just give to you about that you use, why, what does it mean? So the first one is halal, H-A-L-A-L, halal, which means the following, to shine, to rave. That's what it means, halal. H-A-L-A-L, to shine, to rave. And it also means a flower that is blooming because it is doing what it was created to be. So it's a flower which is blooming because it's created to do what it's supposed to do. This is what the Hebrew word, remember Hebrew words are very rich in meaning. So basically shine each day. You don't need music to shine by the way. That is this word, halal. Um, the other meaning of this word is clamorously foolish. Clamorously foolish, that you will look foolish to people around you when you worship in God. You worship the Lord when you clamor clamorously foolish. Clamorously is to do it on purpose. To do it on purpose. Do you know what the other word for halal means? Is to act madly. So next time you, you look at someone because they're looking stupid, dancing before the Lord, this is what it says, act madly. Alright? What happened with David? David was the king. He took off his royal robes. And what did he do? He spun and he danced before the Lord. He took off, he was just in his underwear, the king. And he danced madly and crazy before the Lord. What happened? His wife looked from the window and, and judged him. And you know that she never had a child from that day on. Because she judged him because he was looking stupid when he was worshipping God. Be careful the way we look at people when they worship God. All right? So his wife was disgusted. And um, David looked at his wife and said, so he looked at his wife and he said, I will become even more undignified than this. I'm just giving you, the, this is what the Bible says, by the way. It's not, I'm just the messenger. So when you look, ridiculously crazy worshipping God that's fine alright so that's our response when that spirit wants us to look at ourselves so that we look correctly in front of people you know this is you know you know I, I, I must I must I must do it in a special way I don't want to offend those people when I worship God that's a spirit that actually wants to shut that thing down that's not God all right? So, you know, I need to look correct when I worship God. Come on. So it says, that's the first word. Second word is yada. Yada. Y-A-D-A-H. Yada. And this word means to revere. To revere. To give thanks. To lift up hands. So when we revere God, we lift up hands. That's why you, that's why you lift up hands. Because you revere God. You revere God. Hebrews 7.11. Hebrews 7.11 says, Noah, being warned of things unseen, in reverence prepared an ark. He was working. In reverence he prepared an ark. Okay? So, your preparation of what God said, your preparation of what God said is worship. So you lift, when you lift up hands, what happens? Something happens when you lift up your hands. Just remember that. When, when you revere God like that, something happens when you lift up hands. That's why you lift up hands. 
It's not I feel, you know, conscious of the person next to me looking at me. Look mad, look crazy, whatever, when you're worshipping God. So what does this do to to uh, what does this do to God? Well, um, ask God, what is He doing, Lord? What are you doing? And when you start lifting your hands up, Lord, what are you doing? In uh, David said this in the book of Psalms, 141 verse two. He says this in Psalm 141 verse two: "Let the uplifting of my hands be like the evening sacrifice." Let the lifting up of my hands be like the evening sacrifice. That's what he says in Psalm 141 verse 2. So what was he doing? He was actually tapping. David was tapping into something which was still under the law. He already tapped into something of the future. The third word is barak. Barak. B-A-R-A-K. B-A-R-A-K. Barak. Um, it means to bless. To bless. The other meaning is to kneel. To salute. Why do you kneel? Why do you stand to attention? Why do you? These are these responses. Barak. To bless. All right. The fourth one is tahila, not tequila. Tahila. Tahila. T e h r l l a. Tahila. And this is a song or a hymn of praise. It is a spontaneous song. Tahila. It is a spontaneous song. It is a hymn of praise. It is spontaneous moments during worship. So it's like you, you can be in your car and you just start singing this out your own song, your own melody. You, it's a spontaneous praise, spontaneous worship, okay? And do you know that God responds to Tehillah praise? He responds to it. We know that now. He responds to it. Remember, this is what we've been building up. God responds. So there's lightning, thunders, whatever. This is happening in heaven. So when we're praising, something happens. The thing is, the devil gets you to believe something else. But you need to believe. There's something happening when we're worshiping God. God responds to healer praise. So you say what's in your heart right now. You're busy saying, Lord, what's you know, in my heart? And you say, ah, oh, Lord, I love you. God responds. That's to heal. That's, that's praise, spontaneous praise. And do you know what? That your, your praise actually wrecks God. That's what, uh, that's what I was reading in uh, Song of Songs. Um, is that he's undone. That's his response when we worship in him. So your praise affects him, okay? Um, God, that's what it says, I'm undone by your praise and your worship. The next uh, word is zamar. Zamar, Z-A-M-A-R. Zamar, Z-A-M-A-R. And zamar means to make music. So this is the only place now where music comes in. So these are other all responses in that. Yeah, it says zamar means to make music. And it means to sing praise, to play, to play a musical instrument, to pluck on an instrument. That's what zamar means. The next one is toda. Toda. T-O-W-D-A-H. T-O-W-D-A-H. And toda means a confession. To be honest with God in worship. Toda, to be, to, to be honest with God in worship. Now, I want to say to us as, as believers, you know, we go through different valleys. We go on mountains. We go through pain. We go to, through hurt. We go through a lot of things. But it is also good to be honest with God. Don't curse God, but be honest with Him. And say, you know, God, I'm so disappointed. I'm so discouraged yeah. Okay, this is, this, is, this is just in normal day life. This, this is what we can do. So this is this, I'm being honest with you, God, and this is actually in worship. This is worship. So do you know there's 150 psalms in the, uh, psalms in the Bible? 150 psalms. Do you know that 47 of the 150 psalms are complaints? 
in the Bible. 47 of the 150 Psalms is complaints in the Bible. But do you know that after every single one of the Psalms, at the end of it, at the end of each of these Psalms, it says, but I will praise you. But I will praise you. So, or besides, so that actually in part of this, in the Psalms, they've been, they, the psalmists are being honest, but despite all the, the, the loss, the pain, the hurt, the end of the psalm says, but I will praise you. And that's where this, everything, the atmosphere changes there. But I will praise you. Psalm 51 says, yeah, oh, why are you so downcast, O oh my soul? And it says, put your hope in God. Put your hope in God. So, do you know that almost a third of the Psalms are complaints? That means you can't have worship without being honest. You're not accusing God. Just remember, the devil is the accuser. We're not saying being honest, I accuse God about something. No. If you've had loss, theft, death, whatever, you don't accuse God. That's the accuser. But you've been honest and say, oh, I'm so disappointed. Yet I will praise you. Job said, okay, Job lost everything. He lost money, family, all his children, everything. Job said, though you slay me, I will trust you. And that is what worship is. That is what worship is. So Psalm 24, I spoke to you about, this is a strong thing even in this year, about it's ascending, uh, it's this ascending the hill of the Lord, it's ascending, it goes in the glory. So you trusted previously to see his glory, and it might be that, you know, you trusted to see glory, the glory of the Lord, and you haven't seen it yet. There's some people that hear testimonies of the glory and you haven't seen it yet. And, you know, you, you trust in, Lord, I want to see this. But maybe you tried to ascend the hill, tried to ascend and experience the glory, and it's maybe been tough. Um, and maybe it's been hard. And uh, um, I want to encourage you and say to you this, we only have the opportunity while we're on earth to worship the way we worship. In heaven, we won't have the same opportunity. Because in heaven, there's no resistance. Only on earth, there's resistance to our worship. We'll never have this opportunity to worship God out of choice on earth. In heaven one day. It's only on earth because of the resistance and the enemy with what his influence is, is what we have here on earth. We'll never have this opportunity to worship God the way we do on earth again. So, on earth, it costs you everything to worship Him. That's the difference, on earth. Every part of you and I have to choose that to worship Him because of the resistance that we have on earth. So, to make sense of your trial that you go through, the trials you go through, it is actually so that you can learn to worship. To make sense of the trials you go through is that is actually where we learn to worship God. I've said this before. People have said this thing. And there's an increase of what's happening. So the, the, there's an increase of the glory on the planet Earth that's happening through the church. All over the world. There's people who have come to know Jesus across the world like never before. That are alive. Not have gone to heaven yet. That are presently living. There's more believers now on planet earth than there's been even in the past. There's more people living now than have lived in the past on planet earth that are alive. And there's so many believers now. And the increase of the glory of the Lord is increasing. Just because of like even today. The gathering where we gather together. There's an increase of his glory already. Yeah. But people have said, but, you know, but why doesn't just the glory, why doesn't God's glory just come down, all his glory, just, yeah, like it is in heaven right now, all over the earth. If that happened, 
then everyone on earth would not have been able to choose to worship God. They would have just fallen in their faces and worshipped God. Then they wouldn't have had a choice. That's why we haven't seen that. But there is an increase of the measures of His glory that is increasing because the body that carries His glory is increasing. That's why this place will start to look more and more like that place on earth as it is in heaven. Amen? All right. So we have chosen to worship in spite of every demonic challenge not to do it. That's what we get to choose. That is the privilege we can actually, we have to choose despite what we experience or feel. We have a choice every day and in every season to worship him. What does your worship do to him in pain? Um, do you know that when you're going through pain, through loss, whatever, do you know what your and my worship does? When you're going through pain and you're worshiping him? Do you know that the Bible says that, listen to this, the Bible says that he keeps every tear in a jar that you've cried. Wow. <laughs> every tear that you've shed because of pain that you've gone through and you still chose to worship him, he's kept in a bottle. That's how he responds to your pain. That's how important it is to him, every tear, every loss, everything you've gone through, and you still worship him. That's how it affects him. All right? So in this world you will have what? Tribulation. That's what the Lord said. Then he says, be of good cheer. Why? I have overcome. It's time to worship the king. Knowing that your and my worship wrecks him. Your and my worship affects him. All right? The last word, Hebrew word, is Shabbach. Is Shabbach. S H A B A C H. Shabbach. It means to shout. It means to praise. Too loud. L A U D. L A U D. Too loud. Okay? To exclaim. To, command, to commend. That's what Shabbat means. To shout. You can shout. I mean, in your car, in your house, or whatever. Just, wow, I love you, Jesus. You're awesome. Ah, I praise you. That's what it means. Okay? So, sometimes you need to, um, to shout louder than the voices that are actually coming to you. Hello? Sometimes those thoughts that are coming to you, or those voices you're hearing or things coming to you, you need to shout until that goes. That's how it works. In South Africa, for those online, we have signs that say in South Africa, Stilte Kerk. Or there are signs translated means quite, there's a church happening now. We're not a quiet church. We're a victorious church. We're a church of praise and worship. And in our workplace, whatever, we shift the atmospheres because of what we speak and what we declare, despite what we experience. And guess what? There are testimonies we are hearing because of what we are saying, what we are doing in our worship. There's testimonies busy happening now because of our continual resisting the, 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 the pressures and the things of circumstances. Things change. They are changing. All right? So... The Lord knows how to interpret your worship as a shout. He knows how to interpret your worship. Because shouting does something to the enemy. So when you get persecuted by people, people at your work, people whatever, be thankful. Because you can worship him. In spite of your pain. That is worship. So when the people at work are coming against you, when the people are saying things about you, oh, you stupid Christian, you this at school. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You were persecuted. You paid the price. You died for me. You still worship the Father. The Father you love. We worship Jesus. We worship God in our circumstances. In all circumstances, count it joy. In all circumstances, count to joy when you go through these things. That's worship. And there's favor in your and my life. 
And God wants to, just like those shepherds, in the darkest of things that you're busy going through, worship is our key. That we'll see the birthing of what Jesus is doing through our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, I want, you can just stand. We're going to just pray. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, I want to just pray for everyone just listening online and afterwards um, to this message as well as the folks that are here this morning. And Father, I want to pray for that in whatever uh, place or season we find ourselves in, Lord, we want to, we want to bring your season into the, uh, uh, into the now. We want to see your kingdom come now. We want to see your breakthrough come now. Lord, that we want to worship you in spite of. Thank you for the opportunities that we have to grow, even through the pain that we're going through, even the discouragement, the, the, the disappointments, the betrayals, that we can still choose to worship you, Jesus. Thank you that give us an understanding of what it means uh, to worship you, to know that you're undone. You're, you are affected by how we respond in the midst of circumstances and that your heart is touched. And we love you, Father, and we pray that you, Holy Spirit, that you would just help us become aware more and more of you each day in every situation that we'll experience you because we love you and we know that you love us. In Jesus' name, Father, I thank you. Amen. Amen.